الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Welcome everyone for this new course in 12 weeks insha'Allah the title is Revelation through the lens of the Seerah so in the title we have two concepts we have Revelation and we have Seerah and we have the connection between Revelation and the Seerah let me start with the first concept which is Revelation Al-Wahi why we talk about revelation and focus about revelation in this time and inshallah in this masjid didsbury inshallah from october we have also tuesday class inshallah just about specifically about how to understand quran why we talk about quran a lot especially these days we need the revelation all the time especially these days when we see the tribulation and tests around the world, especially our brothers and sisters in Palestine, we need to come back to revelation, to extract a lot of lessons, to reflect upon the verses of the Quran. Do you know that in Surah Al-Isra, and Surah Al-Isra, it's not about the incident of the Isra. The incident of the Isra, it just mentioned in the first ayah but the rest of the surah is about what will happen in the place of isra in the end of the time that's why it's very important surah nowadays rasulullah he went at night to the masjid al-aqsa but allah mentioned that just in the first ayah then the ayat after that, what will happen in the end of the time? And surah ends with the same thing. And in between is the battle between haqq and batil in the whole surah. The point here is, surah al-Isra is where Allah ta'ala mentioned the term Qur'an the most in the, in the entire Qur'an. Ten times Allah mentioned Qur'an in Surah Al-Isra which is number one in the 114 surahs in terms, of, in terms of how many times Allah mentioned the name the Qur'an Point here is, in the end of the time you need Qur'an more and more because you will face some difficulties only Qur'an can solve these problems because people save, save, will face a mental health or a disaster tribulation only if they hold in Qur'an they can be safe that's why it's very important to talk a lot about the revelation about the Qur'an but we said revelation Al-Wahi Qur'an is not the only revelation Torah is revelation Al-Injil is revelation, Al-Zabur. So we have many prophets Allah Taala sent to the human being and they all came with revelation. That's why the first point I want to make here is I want to distinguish between the last revelation, the Quran, and the rest of the revelation. That's the first one. If you can write down for me the distinguish between the Quran, the last revelation, and the previous revelation. That's our first point in this introduction. You know, revelation is start very early. When Allah Taala told us the first story happened, which is the story of Adam and Iblis, and then. Allah said, قُلْنَا هْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا Go down to the earth, Adam, Hawa, and Iblis. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى If a guidance comes from me, then some will take that guidance, they will believe in it, and some will reject that guidance. Revelation is from the early. 
in the all history of a human being, revelation is always there. Because this earth without revelation is just a dead. Allah Taala describe some a person who believe in revelation and a person who reject a religion a re revelation as a hay and mayit, someone alive and someone dead. Why? Because Allah created Adam from clay, and then when fihi min ruhina. We created from two dimensions, soul and body. And we came to this earth. In this earth, we can find our, the food of our bodies, which is drink, food, all other desires. That's all from the earth. But what about our soul? Our souls need its food. Our soul is not from the clay, it's not from the earth. The food of our souls is from the heaven, is the revelation. So the point here is the revelation is the food of our souls. That's why in the history of human being, any civilization, any nation, reject the revelation, Whatever they reach from the worldly side, they're still dead because the revelation is not there. Because the revelation is what makes you a real human, real human. You know the purpose of this life. So Allah Taala sent a lot of revelations. And He then sent the last revelation, which is the Quran. Now I want to ask you. What's the distinguish or the difference between the Quran and the previous revelations? Any points which is different between the Quran and the previous revelations? It's all from Allah Taala. But there's a slight difference which is very important for this course. What do you think? Yes. Very important point. So the all previous revelations is just for a certain nation. A certain prophet, Allah sent him to a certain nation. Except Rasulullah Muhammad, Allah sent him for the entire human being. That's very important. It means that the Quran is not just for the Sahaba. Quran even not just for us. Quran is for all the human. For the American people, the Chinese, the Japanese, the African, all the non-Muslims nowadays, Quran has sent for them. So that's number one. Quran is for the all human beings. What else? Another distinct yes. Preserved book. So all the books before. Allah gave the duty of preserving those books is for, for the scholars. Except the Quran, Allah made promise. Inna nahnu dhikra wa inna lahu indeed, we are the one who descend this revelation, and indeed, we are, we will preserve this book. That's why this book is a child in China, a child in Africa, they will recite the same book with no mistake. If an imam did a mistake in Taraweeh, all the masjid will correct him because this is a preserved book. Nowadays, we have the entire Quran is scripture which had written in the first century on the life of Rasulullah nowadays. And one of the earliest scripture is here in Birmingham University. While the Christianity, they don't have even one, any of their scripture in the first century. First piece of scripture of Bible, and Bible consists of 8,000 verses. The first one they found is 18 verses, which is 100 and 50 years after the death of 
Isa alayhi salam and it's in Manchester University. So, number one, Quran is for all humanity. Number two, Quran is a preserved book. Good. Next, any other differences? Okay, number three, which is very important relate to this course. The book before Quran, Allah descend them once, just one time, not gradually. Except Quran, Allah Taala sent the Quran during the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu during 23 years. That's why the the people of the Quraysh, the disbelievers, they complain. Why this Quran is unique? Why is it not like the revelation before? They sent just once. Allah sent it through the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Okay, there is many. Oh, okay, anything else? Yes? Sort of what? Okay, rulings. Okay. Okay, Quran is a miracle. Okay, maybe it's a unique miracle because the previous book also has miracle and it has laws also, especially the Torah has a lot of laws. But we can say in this specific point, the laws in Quran is the last message from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Allah said, when Zanna al Kitab Muhayminan, Muhayminan it means dominant, dominant over the all previous revelation. It means if you want to know the last message from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, read the Quran. There's other many, but that's for is enough for me in this related to this. Let me reflect on some of these features. Who said that Quran is for all humanity? Is that right? Is that right? Rasulullah is for all humanity. So Rasulullah is the messenger of Chinese nowadays. Is that right or wrong? You say wrong, raise your hand. Rasulullah, Allah send him to the Chinese nowadays. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. Do they know Arabic? Okay. Did they see Rasulullah Sallallahu So how can be a messenger to them while they don't see him and they don't know Arabic? Who can answer this question? Yes, Rasulullah is the all humanity. So the Chinese nowadays, they didn't see Rasulullah So how can he be a messenger for them? For one. And they don't know Arabic. Go on. Wait a minute. How his message is given to the whole world? You mean Quran? So his legacy, he went, left, and he left his legacy, which is Quran. Good. Any other point? Yes. So other religions, they talk about that Rasulullah will come. Very good. What else? Yes. Sorry? Signs of the Quran. So, so the, like the same point, Quran is the message for them. Okay. Any elaboration? Yes, Jad. Sahaba went and spread the message. Okay, what about Sahaba is not there, is not here now. Is there any Sahaba in China now? No. That's a good point. Just in need elaboration. Yes, Adam. Sorry? The Quran is a universal message. We can spread it. Good. Okay.
This is a very important point, and maybe non-Muslim ask you, you said that your prophet is my messenger, how is that? Okay, that's now the miracle of the life of Rasulullah wasallam and the miracle in Quran itself. Quran itself emphasizes a lot to this Ummah, which is the last Ummah, and to one of the main features of this Ummah is it will spread this deen. كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ Why? تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ This Ummah, Quran emphasizes a lot that one of the most important good deeds is to guide others, is to spread the message of revelation to others. In an extent that if you guide anyone and he convert to Islam, whatever he will do with good deeds, it will count in your record in the day of judgment. Can you believe? You know, teach a one child Al-Fatiha and you are the first one who taught that child Fatiha. That child, when he grow up and become adult, in his entire life, every single salah he will pray, it's in your record. Because you taught him Al-Fatiha. That's why, so our deen and the life of Rasulullah is unique that that make many of the followers of Rasulullah another messengers. That makes sense. Sahaba, every one of them, he feel this responsibility. Rasulullah passed away, I'm the messenger. I'm the one who have duty to spread the message. That one, when they came to the Persia and the Sahabi, Rabbi Ibn Amr, and stand before the king of the Persia, he said, Inna Allah abta'athana, Allah send us. They feel this responsibility. They feel that Allah will ask us if we don't spread the message. We have to feel this duty. That's why Sahaba, straight away they spread message very quick. After less than 80 years after the death of Rasulullah is from China till, till France. Can you imagine? Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the one where Rasulullah spent time in his house when he came to Medina, his grave now is in Istanbul. Why he left Medina? Why he left Medina the best place? Because he realized the responsibility. Umm Haram, the auntie of Anas ibn Malik, Rasulullah used to come to her house many times after Dhuhr. Her grave now is in Qubrus. So, Sahaba realized this. So, Quran is Tell the, told the followers that if they are a good believer, they should spread the message. قال الله قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني. If anyone was follow me truly, he should spread the message. سورة يوسف. So that's number one. So we are, we have the responsibility to spread the message to Chinese people, if we are true believers. Number two, another secret, it's in the Quran itself. Even if it's in Arabic, we have this responsibility. There's some miracles in Quran. If anyone who is want to seek the truth, he will find out that Quran is not from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not our course is about, but that's two things. This Ummah is the messengers after the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Quran itself is a miracle that he may, Quran Allah mentioned something long time ago, just we discovered recently. It's a preserved book. It's some uniqueness of Quran. I'll mention in the course, inshallah, on Tuesday. So the point here is what make our revelation unique is, is for all humanity. Because of all humanity, Allah Taala graduate, it's now the second point, graduate this revelation to the life of Rasulullah Another question, why the revelation came down gradually? 
during the life of Rasulullah sallam what's the connection in the life of Rasulullah sallam and the revelation why Quran is just sent down once like Torah and Injil and Zabur why he came during long time 23 years till Allah complete that revelation yes Make some time to reflect. Good. So if you take all this task, big task, one times, just divide it to small task, then you can adjust these tasks. Good. What else? Salman? So because some rules is just related to laws so people are addicted to the alcohol if it came down leave alcohol straight away no one will obey that rule so it will come gradually very good yes Very good. So it's, it's it just it's just in the in the environment of da'wah. For example, in the people of Mecca, the Quran it just strengthens the belief, and then later the laws come. Very good. This last one, yes. Purify people. Okay. Okay, guys, just pay attention. Why Allah Taala revealed the Quran in 23 years in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? It's very important point and the most important in lesson today, because that why the course is about revelation and the seerah. Look, Quran is revealed gradually according to the circumstances. So circumstances happen. The people, the companions in Mecca, they face some difficulties in Mecca. Straight away, the Quran descends and talk about that circumstance. What's the solution? They talk about what's their position. That is very important method of purification or growing up any nation. That's why, for example, let me give me an example of nowadays. If anything happened in the world now, in Gaza, for example, and you go and recite some ayat in your salah, just one page, you'll feel that this ayat is just revealed right now. Why? Because you saw the circumstances, and then you recite the ayat, oh, since he's talk about this, it's so relevant. So relevant. Quran won't the reader to feel this fact Quran is relevant to our time so any circumstances happen go and recite Quran you'll find Quran talk about this because the same circumstances that people face before is nowadays that's our main goal here in this course is just to show you this that all you face from challenges nowadays it's there in Mecca or in Medina you can tell me any challenges, I will tell you. It's, it's there in Mecca, but you just need to reflect upon it. So imagine any circumstance happened and the revelation came. Let's give strength to the companions that time. That Almighty is care about this human being and send a revelation to solve their problems and to talk about their circumstances. Subhanallah. What about us? Same thing. Any circumstance happen to you and go. That's why Quran is five times prayer. But every time you feel difficulties, you go to the prayer, you read some ayat. Oh, it seems this is revealed to me. So that's the main point to feel that Quran is relevant, relevant to our problems, relevant to our circumstances revert to our modern time number two 
Quran now, the disbelievers, or those who reject the Quran, they come up with some misunderstanding. They try to make some misconceptions around Quran, Quran, and Quran came after that to remove the confusion. Believe or not, all the misconceptions nowadays, even in different terms, you'll find it in the Quran. And you will illustrate one of the main misconceptions around us nowadays. So that's another thing because Quran is just so the the people spread this rumor. Oh, how can we believe that Quran is this? And the revelation came after a while. Why after a while? Then the people of Mecca or Medina they oh, what's going on? Is that right or wrong? Oh, and then the revelation came. Same our modern time. They spread the misconception. And if you don't reflect upon Quran really, now you confuse. Till you came and reflect upon Quran. Oh, that's really amazing. So that's why become Quran is interactive book. So you always have problems or have some misconceptions. Come to the Quran and you find the answer. Third point is to give us advice how we deal with the new Muslims or Muslims but they were far away from their deen. For example, you as a da'ya, you want to call people. Suppose they are Muslims but they are far away, they don't pray. They don't calculate, they do everything wrong but they are Muslims. Or non muslim how can you give them da'wah? This method that Quran came gradually just to advise us. Sometimes you have, you have to prioritize. Some Muslims, they want to give all the commands of the Quran one time to the new believer. Or one time to Muslims who fall away. That's not a Quranic method during the seerah. Example, if you have one friend who is Muslim, but he pray sometimes, sometimes he didn't pray, she didn't wear hijab, for example, she is separated from her family, doesn't like her family, doesn't care about her mom, there's many problems now. When you give advice for her, you have to prioritize. You can't advise her for everything. That's not the nature of a human being. That's why Quran come gradually to teach us this. Oh, you have to do that, and you have to do that, you have to do that, you have to do that. All these things is just symptoms. You have to go to the root, which is what is in her heart. She loves Allah. And his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All this problem will, will solve one after one. That's why the Makki Quran is focused on this. What is in the heart of the people? If the people reject the commands, it's just symptoms. Why they reject what is in their heart, we should focus on this. So, for example, if some people nowadays, their daughter leave the hijab the first thing they will think about is oh how shame this for our family they don't care about her if she were or not if she's safe in the day of judgment or not no they care about the reputation of the family itself so that's why leaving hijab is just a symptom you should go to the root to the love of allah in the heart Especially this country. So when you build that, like Mecca Quran, then the problem is solved very easily. That's why Allah Taala in Mecca just focus on this. In Medina, rules come. Sahaba straight away, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey because their hearts fill of love of Allah. So that's why Quran also come gradually. Four point. Quran come gradually. To give us two examples 
Mecca example and Medina example. When we are weak and Muslims, we can derive a lot of lessons from Mecca period. When we have a strong state, we can derive a lot of lessons from Medina period. This two periods are very important for us. Because we will go through a lot of circumstances like this. A lot of circumstances like this. So it's very important to understand the seerah of Rasulullah in light of revelation. Then you will deal with the problems wisely. Very wisely. You know that Rasulullah, I'll give you an example. Then Rasulullah when he came to Medina. How many idols around the Kaaba? 360 idols around the Kaaba. Did Rasulullah used to pray next to Kaaba? Yes, 13 years. And the idols are there. Yes, idols are there. Did he command his companion to smash these idols in the middle of the night? And then he can't pray, no idols, no anything. When did he smash these idols? Fatih Mecca, after 20 years of prophethood, 20 years of prophethood, he didn't touch these idols, because idols just sentence. He want to change the heart of these people and the minds of these people who go around these idols. When he changed the hearts, then it's in one day in Mecca, when he conquered Mecca, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ Finish. The problem is, is because if they smash the idols now, they can't build another one. The problem is not this. The root of the problem is to change the mind set, is to change the heart of the people, and so on. So that's, we can take it for our life also nowadays. If, you, if one of your siblings is far away from the Islam, just try to look at the roots, not the symptoms. The love of Allah Taala and the identity as a Muslim work on this this area. So that's some reason that Quran revealed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gradually. The next point: How many surahs in the Quran? One hundred and fourteen. How many of these surahs revealed in Mecca, and how many? has revealed in Medina. Or before that, how many years did Rasulullah spend in Mecca after prophethood? When did Rasulullah receive the revelation? When he was 40 years old. So the period of prophethood is 23 years old. Okay, 23 years. That's the period of prophethood. How many years? 23. So Rasulullah passed away when he was 63. And he received revelation when he was 40. So how many the period of prophethood? 23. These 23, how many in Mecca and how many in Medina? 13 in Mecca and 10 in Medina. Good. How many surahs revealed in Mecca? Okay, which is more, in Mecca or in Medina? What do you think? Bear in mind that Baqarah is in Mecca, Medina, Ali Imran in Medina, Nisa in Medina, Maida in Medina, Anfal in Medina, Tawbah in Medina, Ahzab in Medina. Yes? Still support Mecca? Okay. The majority, vast majority of Quran revealed in Mecca. Can you imagine? Vast majority. Some companions said 87, that's the minimum. Some scholars said 90, some said 91. 87 surah in Mecca and 27 surah in Medina. Just 27 in Medina or 23 in Medina or 24 in Medina only. But bear in mind, these 20 surahs is very long surahs. Baqarah, Ali Imran, and Nisa al Ma'ina. Okay, now this, now this map should be very clear in your mind. 
that Rasulullah re received revelation in the age of uh, girls do you have lunch today uh, snack okay re received the revelation in the age of 40 and then he passed away in the age of 63 the prophethood is how many years 23 how many in Mecca 13 in Medina 10 and majority of surahs revealed in Mecca Mecca period majority of surahs now look now of the importance of revelation in the context of Sira when did the obligatory of fasting Ramadan revealed Mecca or Medina hmm. Medina that's right the obligatory of the zakat in details Mecca in Medina or Medina Medina the permission to fight the one who fight you Medina the prohibition of alcohol Medina the obligatory of hijab for the women Medina the obligatory for Hajj Medina the rules for inheritance did you realize something that majority of rules is in Medina not in Mecca in that few or 20 surahs at 27 or 23 or 24 surahs that's the vast majority of rules then what's in Mecca then if nearly 90 surahs revealed in Mecca with few rules then what is in Mecca then the majority of Quran is not rules again the majority of Quran is not rules it's not do or don't do that's not the majority of the Quran what's the majority of Quran then and why Quran? Aqlida, knowing Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, yes. More short, that's right, but what's the themes? She said the Tawheed, that's right, yes. Taqwa, piety, it means anything related to the heart, very good. Jannah and Nar, that's a lot. Jannah and Nar, the hereafter is the main theme in. So, talking about Allah and His signs in this universe, the hereafter, Jannah and Nar. What else? Yes. Stories. Majority of stories in Mecca side, not in Medina side. What else? Yes. Sorry? Ahmed? Who is Allah? Yeah, we mentioned that. Yes. Patience. All this act of worship which is related to the heart. Patience, certainty, love, fear, hope. All this thing is in Mecca more. That's right. Okay. No. Yes. How to treat people. That's very important. That's the main theme in Mecca and Medina both. So for example, that's Allah Tabaraka talk in the early revelation, Araita Ladi Yukadi Bubiddin, Fadalika Ladi Yadur Uliatim. Do you know who the one who reject the religion? When you say maybe the one who didn't pray or don't pray, no, the one who become harsh to the orphans. As that's the main theme in Mecca surahs. But the question here is why the rules is late in revelation? Why focus on the relation with Allah, with the people around you, the hereafter main theme, the actions of the heart, perseverance, patience, taqwa, stories? Why this is the main themes? So Juz Amma, for example, vast majority of Juz Amma is Mecca surahs. Jannah and Nar, Jannah and Nar, Jannah and Nar. Why? Yes.
ما شاء الله خليك بس سنة سارة حسنت يا سارة connection with Allah is the main point if you love Allah any commands come from him it's easy to say سمعنا وأطعنا if you don't that love is not there or there's a lack of love it's very easy to try to escape from the commands of Allah that's the difference between Sahaba and from many Muslims nowadays Sahaba they have firm love of Allah so any command we are ready we are slaves we are servants but the people after that they inherit Islam we are Muslims because my parents are Muslims but they don't know much about Islam but that love so commands for people nowadays it's just duty difficult why i wear hijab why i do this why i pray five times a day but for them i love allah so it's i'm very grateful that allah give me permission to pray to mention his name to have a discussion or conversation with him in fatiha and so on so connection with allah first in mecca that's a lesson for us if we want to revive Ummah again focus on this connection with Allah we have this strong connection we can solve many problems okay why the stories are a lot in Mecca more what's the benefit of stories very good easy to, look, to learn from stories but what else in Mecca, huh? very good examples because Mecca a difficult time when you are in difficult time you need examples you need role models you need stories that what happened to you now is not new the people in Gaza now when they read Quran and they find all these examples oh what happened to us is not new so this story gives them strength. You are not me. There's many nations before and individuals. They taste more than you. And they always be patient. Stories in difficult times. Very significant. So, and Jannah a lot. That's why the first ayat we discuss shall next time. Ya ayyuhal muzzammin qumi layla illa qalila. Do you know that Qiyamul layl was obligatory? For every single Muslim in the early time, for one year. Anyone who convert to Islam in the first year, he should pray Qiyam al layl obligatory. To have that connection with Allah, because with that connection, everything becomes easy. That's what amazed many people in Western country nowadays, when they see some videos from Gaza and they see that woman, old man who lost all his family and he still prays his lord they can't understand it so that because of if you read jannah and not a lot you'll find that dunya is just very short period if jannah now is not in not in your perspective yes now dunya is not fair everything is tough Jannah and Nari in perspective, when you see the people there, they die in tragic way, you say, they went to Jannah straight away. They are better than us. We're still here, we don't know our Khatima. If a person every single night read those ayat, then he will he face during the day any difficulties, he has different perspective, different lens, how he, he look at the at the, at the situations so that's why in, in the period of Mecca it just this is very and then in Medina that's different environment different okay the last point in our lesson today Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Seerah is the context of the revelation some people nowadays they ask you do you know any book that talk about the context of the revelation Asbab al-Nuzul I want to know every single ayah when they revealed to Rasulullah that's a very good question 
and there is some books there talk about this but unfortunately many of these books contain a lot of unauthentic hadith actually we don't know every single ayah when did reveal to Rasulullah what we have is the surah in whole we can say this is in the early Mecca period we can divide Mecca period to four parts and you can tell in which part this revealed but every single ayah no but instead the context of the revelation is the seerah in whole so if you master the life of Rasulullah you, have, you will have good understanding of the context of the revelation instead of books that talk about every single ayah no just study the seerah of Rasulullah life of Rasulullah is the context then you see this in the early Mecca period this is in the second period this is and that is just to tell you because some people they always love Asbab al Nuzul and they talk, which is very good books. Kitab al Wahidi, very famous book. Yuti has book, very famous. But a lot of ahadith they mention they are not authentic. But when we go to Mecca period, yes, now the context becomes more clear than the period of, of Mecca. But we don't need that even. We need the seerah in whole to understand the context of Rasulullah of the revelation. Now the last point here is Rasulullah will receive the revelation. What's the main problems in Jahiliyyah in the pre-Islamic era? That the revelation came to solve these problems. Can we illustrate some main or major problems that in Arabia that time or in Roman Empire, Persia Empire, India, in China that days and the historian talk about the Jahiliya in different places can we count some main problems to see that many of them is still relevant to our modern time yes sir shirk that's the first thing so associating something with God Shirk. Either in Arabia, in Roman, in Persia, in India, and all around the world, shirk is dominant that time. Question, is shirk still nowadays the problem also? Yes, many major places nowadays. Do we still have idol, idols nowadays? In the 20th century, 21st century, Mm. Do any people now still worship some animals? Some idols? Sun or moon? So the problem is still there also. We still have this problem of shirk. So it's still relevant. Another problem. Another major problem. Yes, Ian. Very good. Woman. Treatment towards women. Is one of the major problems in every single civilization in the past. Every single civilization they have perspective towards women. And if you read history, you'll find something crazy. So Islam came also with this. This Jahiliya in Arab, not Arab them, but all around the world, they humiliate women. That's why this will take one of the main theme in Quran. Even one of the longest surah in Quran, the longest after Al-Baqarah in the length, not in the ayat, is Surah Al-Nisa. It's about the women. And Allah talk about a lot of examples. When they talk about that, some tribes in Arab, they used to bury their daughters when they are alive. Is this still relevant to our days? Or is something just Arab people they used? Not all of them, but some of them. Who claim this is relevant? Still relevant. Yes.
they start killing them. So China has this problem. Any other place in the world? Yes. Sorry? India, what did they do? I, I don't mean how they look at the women that they are, I mean, lower than the men. No, I mean they kill the babies. Okay. What if, tell, if I tell you this is not in China or India only, this is spread around the world. This is one of the most important phenomena nowadays. How is that? Huh? Abortion. That's that's what Quran talk about. Don't look at the oh they go to the grave and they put the girl here and oh we don't have this nowadays. They can do it in different way. They can do it and go to the a very clean hospital and very senior doctor and do the same thing. Yes. Sorry. Yes, very good. That, that's, that's a kind of also. But I want now, abortion is, is, is now a phenomenon. Why they now spread this? Uh, I mean, this type of surgery is around the world. The majority of it is just for some people. They commit zina and they went to the hospital and that finished. That's the same what Allah talk about the Arab. It's just how they do it is different. Do it in the hospital or do it in near the grave. In the end of the day, it's the same. So it's still relevant. Arab people that 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 day is also they they the woman is always lower class than men. They don't inherit women, for example. Is that still relevant nowadays? Do you know that some Muslims country nowadays they still have in their tradition, it's shame for women to inherit from their father. You know that? I will not mention any countries, but I know certain countries which they, for their tradition, shame for women to inherit or to ask even for inheritance. She should give it to her brother straight away. And I face one specific problem. That one of uh, a girl, which is a lady, which is Hafidhar al Quran, and she used to come to the and teach the Quran. I know her specifically, and then she is the only one take a, her, care of her father when he was very old. And she has a brother. He don't care. He didn't visit his father yet all the last year till he died. And when his father died, he come and ask for inheritance. And the tradition that girl should give her share to her brother. She said, I will never give it to you. You will never take care of your father. You never. So her tribe, what a shame. Can you imagine? That in some Muslim countries. Quran talk about something still relevant. Still relevant when you look at that. Why the the, the the theme of women will take a lot of okay, last two points before we finish. Any major problems? Yes, yes. Sorry, Muhammad. Different classes of people, which is very common that days in all the civilizations. Either colorism or either racism or even to the tribe, to the color, to the race, to the social uh, class, to the financial level. People always differentiate. Quran, one of the main theme come to solve is this. كُلُّكُمْ لِآدَمُ وَآدَمِ تُرَابِ You all from one family, Adam and Hawa. That's why he starts the stories of Quran from that family. To tell us you are from one family. How can then, during the history, some tribe become the best, some race? But you were from the same family. How's that? Good. Is this still relevant? Definitely relevant. Last point. Any major problem? Yes. 
the ego. The ego and the old problems in the heart, the envy, the ego, the arrogance, which is very f spread still nowadays also, which is the motive, what motivate all the actions nowadays is this ego. Ego is one of the main theme in Quran. What I want to say, read Quran and reflect Quran and all the theme of Quran is very relevant to our modern days. Don't think that Quran talk about something in the past and its end. No, at all. Everything in the Quran is still relevant till the day of judgment. We just need some reflection and you'll see that. May Allah wa guide us the straight path. May Allah wa give us deep understanding to our revelation. Allahu alam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have any questions in three minutes, anyone who can. If you want to leave with this, three minutes, any questions? Okay, the next time, inshallah, uh, I'll just encourage everyone to come six o'clock if you can. You know, maybe this is very early for many people. They study at universities. Try to come as soon as you can, just one hour. And inshallah, see you next week if Allah gives us life. Allah alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.